Hello and welcome back to an all new episode of Ek Mulakat. Today we have with us a very noted personality, Mr. Shashidhar Reddy. He is a four time MLA and also a Minister of Science and Technology, Pollution Control and Environment. And in addition to this, he has also been a member of the National Disaster Management Academy and also a vice chairman of the same. So let us all welcome Mr. Reddy. Mr. Reddy, I'd like to welcome you to our studio and also welcome back to the Brahma Kumari headquarters in Mount Abu. Mr. Reddy, I'd like to ask you about politics and how you got into politics because I know you have a degree, a master's degree from Kansas State University in the U.S. in agronomy and also an undergrad in agriculture from Hyderabad. Um, how did you get into politics? Politics has been in the air from the time I gained consciousness. So it's been in the family. That's and right, because uh, your father is... Yes, uh, he has been uh, yes. a very prominent figure going back to the independence uh, moment. And he was one of, he was the youngest member of the Constituent Assembly in 1950. My first trip to Delhi was when I was about a year old. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so that way politics has been, you know, in a way. In a way. Yes, in a way, yeah. yes. Yeah. But then in a democratic setup, that's not enough. You know, one has to, may get an opportunity, but has to sustain. Sure. So I've, I've got elected uh, to the Slate Assembly for the first time 25 years ago. That was my last visit to Mount Abu. 25 years ago. Five years ago. So you're coming here 25 years. Yes, you know, uh, wow. just after winning my election uh, in June 1992, mm -hmm. uh, father was the governor of uh, Rajasthan at okay. that time. Okay. And uh, he happened to be, they have a summer uh, home in, in Mount Abu. Okay. So he was here okay. at that place. So I, after the results were out, I came straight to meet him and okay. that's when I visited the Brahma Kumaris uh, for the first time. What a wonderful way to, you know, win your elections and then come to come. such a highly spiritual place right. to get your blessings. I think that was a pure, you know, God's wish. God's wish, yes, right. absolutely. That's very, very good to know. Um, you've also been a member and a vice chairman of the National Disaster Management Academy. And um, in this day and age, we're seeing a lot of disaster, natural calamities going on in the world. You have your tornadoes and your hurricanes and earthquakes. What was it like being in a crucial position such as this? Well, the Disaster Management Authority uh, was formed in 2005. Okay. You know, just after the uh, tsunami we, we had experienced in December 2004, which left about 230,000 people dead oh my in, the, in the North Indian Ocean Basin. Oh my God. And uh, about 16,000 people died on the east coast of India. Oh so the government then reacted mm -hmm. and put in place an institutional um, arrangement. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it was, I, I was there as a founding member mm -hmm. and uh, continued, uh, you know, after my tenure, I went on to become the vice chairman. India is highly vulnerable. I mean, it's a, it's a big challenge right. uh, to different kinds of disasters. And during my uh, tenure mm -hmm. as vice chairman, particularly the Uttarakhand disaster, we okay. had uh, the Filene cyclone, okay. we had the Sikkim earthquake, and okay. you know several uh, uh, big uh, events. Okay. And um, it it has been it was a challenge, and then I I uh, I enjoyed the challenge and then this gives an opportunity we, we focused primarily on enhanced preparedness okay and i think any any country the increasing vulnerability to natural disasters mm -hmm. world over mm -hmm. uh, the key is uh, you, know, you know better prepare, preparedness and i think uh, we focused on that uh, right from the beginning and then uh, it uttarakhand was a totally different situation you know okay. every nobody was in a position to do anything okay, okay. it happened too suddenly mm -hmm. and uh, people had to uh, there was nowhere to go okay. like it was a hilly terrain okay. and the chardam uh, route was such right, right. Uh, when it came to the filing uh, cyclone in uh, uh, which hit uh, orissa mm -hmm. coast in october 2013 internationally it was forecast that, uh, you know, thousands of people will die. Mm. But, you know, our preparedness affairs over the years mm -hmm. paid very rich dividends. Wow. We could limit the Disaster. loss of life mm -hmm. to uh, 
about 23 which oh, which was wow. unavailable isn't that wonderful i've also read that a lot of people were not even aware that ndma exists <laughs> but it was solely because of your effort and you know you put in a lot of hard work into this that people even became aware of this throughout uh, you know from the inception uh, i was the only person from public life uh -huh. who, who was when a member and then the vice chairman okay i think uh, you know as a member of the state assembly from uh, 93 onwards uh, uh, and being in politics a little longer than that uh, you 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 know a politician tends to interact more than officials mm -hmm. bureaucrats mm -hmm. uh, do and mm -hmm. uh, that i think uh, uh, i was open to it i was open to the media i mm -hmm. was open for criticism <laughs> because i always believed that if something was not right mm -hmm. you know you accept it and, and uh, build on uh, you know we had the triple disasters in in japan right uh, 2011 right. and uh, that really uh, was uh, japan being the most prepared country in the world mm -hmm. but nature's fury is exactly. so overwhelming that they exactly. were also helpful exactly and exactly. then we 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 started you know the prime minister dr manmohan singh was very keen that uh, we work for enhanced preparedness mm -hmm. and we started looking at our nuclear facilities nuclear okay. power plants in the country okay i went round uh, um, the country six different states mm -hmm. we started off with maharashtra oh wow and the tarapur uh, okay. nuclear power plant mm -hmm. and i was interacting with the media and then one girl from the media asked me you're doing it just because of fukushima oh <laughs> i said yes is it wrong <laughs> because okay. you know world it's a global village now anything happen any part of the world That's we need right. to learn from That's it right. and then Uh, you know, um, these are lessons to be learned. That's We right. don't have to have uh, wait for something to happen in our backyard to start doing things better. Exactly, you're exhibiting a very powerful inner strength, and you know, a total understanding of the whole humanity. You know, the whole world as one family. Um, can we attribute that to Brahma Kumaris, or how did you handle these situations? How does um, spirituality play a role in politics in your life? Well, I'll come to the Brahma Kumaris' uh, role and uh, the influence, but I was also uh, a minister for environment uh, going back to 1993 when I first got elected. Okay. And then you know the thing that uh, used to be said then and even now is when it comes to uh, protection of environment, you need to think globally but act locally. Oh, wonderful! Yeah. So I mean, when it comes to climate change, I think it's the same thing. Right. And uh, then coming to uh, the essence of uh, the brahma kumari uh, thought process mm -hmm. if you can uh, if i can call it sure. is um, you know understanding um, you know improving yourself you know transform yourself so that you know the entire society uh, the universe gets uh, Absolutely. transformed Absolutely. and um, i think science spirituality they all have a bearing yes. and it's uh, uh, very much uh, um, to experience uh, it here Would you say that uh, in order to be able to deal with all these disasters and um, who knows we may see a whole lot of them you know coming up in the near future um spirituality is the answer would you say to because a lot of times you're seeing people families displaced you know their homes are gone and everything that they had called their own what they possessed you know materialistically is all vanished So times like these and from your personal experiences what you have observed you know being in that position is spirituality the answer to all of this Well I think um, certainly I mean uh, you know to get the kind of resilience that is required uh, not only in terms of disasters but also uh, any anything that uh, any adverse situation that one faces in, uh, in their the life um, you know you you need to be resilient and I think uh, this kind of uh, spirituality will certainly help and uh, the inner resilience i mean i i happen to read about uh, a program that was um, launched in uh, in in new york city in the, in uh, south manhattan okay after the uh, 911 oh uh, okay and um, i think about 11 schools 
in South Manhattan were uh, chosen. Okay. Uh, the teachers and about uh, 5,000 students mm. who attend these schools okay. uh, to cope with the the situation. You know, m you know the kind of events that unfolded mm. and what kind of an impact it had. They launched uh, a program called the Inner Resilience uh, okay. Program, okay. and then it rubbed off. Um, you know, the entire city in the in the state of New York, and I believe. Uh, in different parts of the, in the United States okay. as well. Theme of yesterday's conference was inner resilience to outer agility. Okay. And uh, I, I see that, uh, you know, I'm not sure what exactly was done as a part of that program, mm -hmm. but here you have a solution. And uh, I think just like we prepare to deal with disasters, you know, we need preparedness. You know, what, what do we do in case there is a, a, a cyclone or right. a flood or right. an earthquake? Right. Uh, you have various preparedness activities right. and I think if this kind of efforts to make a person resilient um, on, a, on a continuous basis, it should also be a part of the preparedness efforts. You know, what can one do? Right. And uh, I think uh, this will go a long way mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, we can't uh, replace the the loss right. uh, in terms of um, you know the properties right. material losses but certainly they to better cope with uh, this i'm sure uh, this will provide them inner strength mm -hmm. and uh, this should be you know incorporated and uh, right. into oh, the r the routine preparedness uh, efforts that are made right. uh, it was i consider it my good fortune um, it was Dadi's uh, wish that, or you know, uh, and for for any uh, layman, mm. as somebody had uh, mentioned this morning, uh, people who experience uh, the the benefits of meditation, Raj Yoga meditation, you know, they understand. Mm. You can get one or two individuals, you slowly spread it, make them experience, mm. and then they start getting convinced. But for a layman to get convinced, unless you have things scientifically validated. Um, that is what the Spark uh, organization uh, set up by uh, under the Brahma Kumaris is trying to do. Mm. And this morning, it was my good fortune to inaugurate a lab. Oh, wow. And uh, the kind of equipment um, that they are going to have, I uh -huh. believe this is the first time in the country, Okay. how the brain is functioning. Okay. And all these things are being monitored. All right. And uh, this can validate the you know it can be a scientific validation for the benefits of uh, spirituality and meditation right. and i think uh, this is uh, this will be a very good way of spreading the message because unless people um, get to see mm. in black and white mm -hmm. and then the other um, thing of spirit, scientific validation is you know if a thing can be replicated mm -hmm. I and mean, if, if if it happens once or twice you know, it's not accepted by the scientific community, but and I think uh, uh, it's a wonderful uh, thing that uh, is being uh, contemplated, mm -hmm. and uh, it was good fortune to inaugurate it. And I'm sure that uh, in the, in the years to come, it will uh, be very beneficial. We are also very happy to have you inaugurate that uh, special project, and uh, I'm getting like pearls of wisdom from you in terms of um, you know when it comes to crisis. It is equally important, you know, you talked about preparedness. In addition to preparing, how, you know, get your um, grocery together yes. or get your clothes together. Yes. In addition to that, if we can have spiritual lessons along the way, especially places that are hard hit by all these tornadoes all the time, you know, if we can have this spiritual aspect incorporated into the training as well, I think it will go a long way. Well, I think I have one more observation about the impact of um, you know the events, mm -hmm. um, you know, like say in a country like India, we've had we witnessed you know ten uh, lakh people, a million people were evacuated in 2013 mm -hmm. when the big uh, cyclone was uh, hitting us, the fly lead. Mm -hmm. The Indian people are able to cope with it. I think is will be far better, far uh, um, uh, better than uh, say what what has recently happened mm -hmm. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Because of our background, right, uh, and uh, and also the faith that you know karma it happens, right. that is one thing. And then 
they 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 can get adapt you know adapt themselves to this kind of distress right. in a much better way than what say the residents of Florida right. or uh, Texas right. uh, would because for them you know millions of homes without uh, power, power and uh, you know right. their millions of people had to leave their homes right. everything destroyed right. um, well they may have insurance they may have other things but then you know really um, is a big uh, serious impact right. on their life and right. uh, you know how they uh, will cope with this situation right. so as you said uh, you know uh, you know uh, preparedness on these lights as well um, when you go back, uh, what will you take back with you from Brahma Kumaris? Like your experiences, you shared some of your experiences. But what was like a major experience, if I can ask you, that you will definitely take back with you and share with everyone? Well, I think, um, uh, as I said earlier, the two, the essence of the whole thing is to understand that you are not a body mm -hmm. in your soul. Mm -hmm. And then meditate mm -hmm. and I think uh, the kind of uh, in, in different uh, sections of the society uh, rich poor everyone uh, alike uh, the kind of stress people are going through uh, to be able to cope with all that mm -hmm. and then stay healthy right and uh, be able to contribute to the uh, you know to the society and uh, the good of the society mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, you know meditation is certainly uh, something that uh, uh, my, I, I will really okay. uh, think is the most important thing. Okay. Have you been practicing uh, Raj Yoga meditation, or maybe you um, you know learned the Raj Yoga meditation this time? This no, trip? no, I, I just had. I mean, it is just a brief uh, thing, okay. and I go back. Uh, you will, I'll really get, you will get seriously into, the, into it okay. because if it can transform me, if I if it can make me a better person, I can certainly um, use it. For the better um, of the uh, my fellow uh, the society, right? Because um, I also read that um, you always have stood up for the poor section of the society, yes. and um, you know always have been on the lines of justice. And these are very noble thoughts <laughs> that you know going um, in line with the Brahma Kumari philosophy that self transformation leads to world transformation. So what you're taking back with you, you can also share with others. Yes, absolutely, and I always believe. And this is what I've uh, learned from when people ask, uh, um, what have you learned from your father? I mean, coming um, from a political family. I used to tell them that what I have learned from him is, uh, you know, how important credibility is. Mm -hmm. You know, you do what you say and then you say okay. uh, what you're going to do. Okay. And then um, the other, other big uh, thing that I learned from is to stand um, uh, for what you think is right. Mm and uh, face fight with anyone even if it is somebody big right and you feel that it is in the interest of the people right. it's a just cause right and i think uh, if, if i get uh, more strength to do that i think that will be a, a, a great blessing, blessing. right uh, you have also visited the brahma kumari center in uh, hyderabad That's right. so maybe if you you know keep in touch with them and uh, your yeah i mean I, I i was there in 2013 when okay. i was with the disaster management authority they had a conference on disaster management okay. I, I had visited then and before coming here the invitation that uh, came for, for me to inaugurate to be a part of the inaugural uh, co uh, inauguration of mm -hmm. the conference um, really made me think that you know in a world where people you help somebody they tend to forget the very next day and uh, the way um, fathers what you could contribute for the growth mm -hmm. of the the center here, mm -hmm. the Gyan Sarovar, right. and um, about twenty five years ago, right. and um, you know that is being and and I, when I came here, I, the, all the people that I met, everybody has been talking about it, and it's so I mean it was a great help that he could render, right. and then to remember something which was done so long back, right. twenty five years back. You know, a generation has passed, right, right. and I said that it will. It is my, you know, I must come here, okay. even though it's a short time. I mm -hmm. said I must come here. That I then I, I I said in my speech yesterday. That's what makes the difference. An ordinary man would have forgotten, but mm -hmm. then these are the people of this great organization who've been trained on these values. Right. And uh, this is something which uh, really said I must. Um, you know, told me inside that I must visit, and then 
I, I was uh, happy to see uh, uh, a plaque uh, in, uh, of the foundation stone mm -hmm. laid by father okay. in 1993 so, for the Gyansaro right, right. the main complex there. Right. Well, and then they were telling me that, um, you know, he had advised them on Vastu where uh -huh. to have a pond, water, oh, okay. and location okay. like this. He took a lot of interest okay. in this. And then he, he it was, he, he, he passed away uh, towards the I'm end of 1996. Either. So what was left of there, mm -hmm. I hope uh, with uh, Baba's blessings, in, in my own humble way, I would like to um, contribute. contribute in whatever. Yeah. Uh, manner I can. Yeah, we are very pleased to hear that and I'm sure, you know, Baba has his ways to make his children do the seva. The gratitude that you talked about here, I mean, that is kind of the general feeling which even I feel in this organization where, you know, even uh, Baba talks about where you set an example for people. I mean, instead of expecting the other person to change, you change yourself and then the other person can follow you. So it has been really wonderful listening to all these experiences that you have had with the uh, Brahma Kumaris. Um, is there any message, any special message that you would like to give our viewers out there who are watching us today? Well, I think uh, this is something um, that the whole world needs. You know, you need transformation. Um, with all the development uh, that we've achieved in different fields, yet uh, every man, every woman, every child feels lonely most of the time. And uh, I think uh, the way to connect to God, transform yourself and then contribute to a better society, uh, I think this is a great opportunity. And, I'm, and I hope and uh, uh, wish that, you know, a lot of people understand this and then uh, follow uh, what uh, Baba uh, tried to teach us. That's very wonderful, and uh, we are very pleased to have you here in our studio. Once again, I'd like to thank you for coming. Thank you. Politics and Spirituality Mr. Reddy very nicely talked about today how to bring a balance between the two. He also mentioned the need for meditation not only in our daily life, but also it will go a long way to help us with our natural calamities, if we were to face one. And with these words, I thank you all for watching us and we'll meet again in our next episode of Ek Mulakat. Om Shanti.